We clear coils! After months of moving on from Lost Ark and proking with my static, I finally cleared all the error trial and raids with my settings. So, wanna celebrate it by making a tier list of each fight? We'll start with trial. First is Garuda. Garuda is my first extreme trial that I did in mine, and I clear it as a tank. I think Garuda is an amazing entry for a tank player. The fight teaches you how to swap, which is a new concept for me coming from Lost Ark. Other fights also have tank swap, however, the punishment for missing a swap in Garuda is a wipe, which forces tank to learn if they want to clear. It also teaches you how to properly position the boss so it doesn't cliff your party, as well as controlling your target to not kill the plump feather. Fight is not difficult at all, but I do think it's a fun fight because whenever a new tank wants to learn how to tank, a fight that I will always recommend is to start with Garuda. However, once you clear it, there's not much to relearn by redoing the fight and playing other role doesn't help either since they don't do anything. So I'm just gonna put it in P because I don't think it's an amazing fight but it's still a good fight. Ifrit! Ifrit is almost like Garuda but for healer. Healer need to stand on certain spot to not hit anyone else with the searing flame and I just when the party is moving towards them. There's also a heal check for new healer player to learn how to heal efficiently while resolving their searing flame with addition of phone stack that applies whenever a nail is destroyed. DPS and tank also have some responsibility. DPS have to focus on the same nail to avoid multiple phone stack and they have to be aware of the tethering with tank and adjust accordingly. The fight is a bit more difficult than Garuda, it's also a fun fight to do in any role which makes me want to replay it whenever I see a Ifrit lobby. I think this is an S tier fight. Titan I was stuck in Titan for so long, oh my god. As a Sprout, this fight is my first wall. My reaction time is horribly slow, I wasn't used to the snapshot, I panicked easily due to the arena size, it was such a good time. I do believe this is one of the best fights. Tank have adds to worry as well as tank swap. DPS have to dodge the landslide and kill the jail in time, healer also have healing check and have to worry about jail as well. In terms of difficulty, it's one of the top, but it's also fun to run it and see new player get flung by a landslide. There's also a lot of things that will kill you if you're not dodging properly so it forces you to learn. I also love to see the Latin lobby because I can practice my new class there. This is also an easy S tier fight. King Mughal. To describe this fight, I have to borrow a word from my friend. It's gimmick. There's no real mechanic, just attack patterns that you need to know how to deal with. And other than that, we need to make sure to kill all the moguls at the same time. I don't think this is a hard fight at all, and it's just not a fun fight due to how many ads we need to pay attention to. There are some replayability values since different roles have to deal with different Mughal, so that's a plus. But it's not really a fun fight, so I don't want to redo the fight. I think this is an F tier. Ultima. There's not a lot to say about Ultima, so I'm going to be quick. The only mechanic in this fight is the stack orb, where it does less damage the more people soak the same orb. Usually tank can soak one orb in first and second set, and then three people will soak one orb during the third set. And for the last set, people will just use the tank LP and cheese the orb. It's super simple, not particularly a fun fight other than to parse, and there's not really a replayability value there. So another F tier for me. The fight then. I love the arena in this fight. The fact that the fence broke in the middle requiring you to dodge the platform tilt is such a fun gimmick. Every role also have a part in the fight. Tank needs to stand away from the party to not cleave. And of tank need to also tank the adds and there are blue orbs that they need to bait as well. DPS have to focus on the orb to maintain gauge to protect the party from the vibe. Healer have the most important role where they get a stack whenever they heal the off tank. So they need to coordinate using single target heal instead of AOE heal. As well as keeping the party top up during the red white. It is a very difficult fight and I would say this is harder than Titan. However, there is a threshold where the fight become unfun, and this is one of them. I think it's a bit too hard to chill for a re-clear since every role have to play good. Because of that, this fight couldn't be an S tier, it become A tier for me. Ramu. Ramu is in the same boat as Leviathan. I believe this is the most difficult fight in ARR. And the reason for that is there's too much clutter with AoE on player, AoE on ground, red white lines. The visual clutter is the worst in this fight, making it hard to see what is going on. Not to mention the orb on the ground where tank needs to grab them to get the buff to reduce the TB damage. However, DPS need to also sometimes take the orb to reduce the buff on the red white damage. But if the DPS takes too much, then the tank won't be left with any for the buff. It's just a chaotic fight. The difficulty is off the chart on this one, but it's not fun to do. And every time I see a Ramu lobby, I tend to avoid it because I don't want to be jailed. I'm going to put it an A with Leviathan. Shifa. Going from Ramu to Shifa is like falling from the top of a mountain. Shifa fight is very easy in comparison. There is no web mechanic. Whenever someone messed up, he's the only one who's going to die so healer can easily rest and fight will continue. The only non-worthy mech is the staff and sword stance where tank will need to swap depending on their debuff. Bow stance where you need to be behind Shifa. A laser knockback where you can dodge or use knockback resist. There's not really a troll dependency mech in this fight. But it is a fun fight, especially the storm and the music drop. It never gets old. Because of that, I'm going to put Shifa on beat and move Garuda on C tier because I think Shifa Shifa is better than Garuda. Moving on to the raid. Before that, let me change this. Yeah, I think we can all agree T3 and T4 is a meme run. It should not be there, it's not fun, I don't even want to do it anymore. T1. I think it's okay, it's not that great, 
it's not that bad either. There are only two mechs, which is the Spit and the Slime. The fight is not that difficult. I think it's a good C tier. It's an okay fight. T2. Now, T2 is an interesting fight because the player can choose which buff the boss have in the last section. There's only one specific mechanic, which is Iron Rod, where you need to pass the debuff around, but not too quick, or else no one can take the rod. This fight is the first fight that requires coordination. However, I don't think the fight is difficult compared to what we'll see in the later fight. Will I want to replay it? I don't think so, so I'm just gonna put it in C. T5. T5 is a big jump in terms of difficulty compared to T2. The Twister and Dread Knight is a one-shot mechanic, the boss hits hard, and overall, I think it's a fun fight. I'll definitely redo it again if I see a PF up for it. I think it's a good A tier fight. It's a good fight for the final fight of the tier. T6. It's kinda hard to just T6 because the fight is not punishing enough in comparison to the Savage counterpart. You're not dying if you mess up the bouquet if you have full health. You can just the slam to the DPS bloat. However, I think this fight have a huge replayability value due to RNG with the bulk spawn and the position for the yellow marker. I believe this is a A tier fight as well. T7. It is such a huge step down in terms of difficulty compared to the SFS counterpart. The difficulty gap is even bigger than T6. Due to that, the fight become very boring for me. The Renault doesn't do any damage, you're not dead if you get petrified, and there's only one Renault. Overall, I believe I can carry a fresh group if I play healer or part very easily. I do think this is a C tier fight, but I do believe this fight is better than T1 and T2 though. T8. God, I hate this fight as a main tank. You just stand there doing nothing. If you play anything other than main tank, then you'll have fun. However, there's no damage in the fight, so the fight is very lenient. I don't think the fight is particularly hard, and because this is mostly a puzzle fight, there's not really a replayability value into it. Maybe I'm biased, but I have a bad taste from my experience main tanking it, so I'm just gonna put this in a C tier. I think this fight is as bad as T7. T9. From a bad fight into one of the best fights. This fight is a huge wall for a newer player. The mech design of the Meteor, the Heaven's Fall, and the Dragon are top tier mech design. The only thing that I don't like is the Golem face because the Golem is so boring and long. And this fight is very hard even for a normal fight standard. Another good point of this fight is the RNG on the Dragon Spawn. It gives the fight a replayability value. I think this is an easy S tier fight. T10. Coming from T9 to T10 is a step back in terms of difficulty. There's not enough interesting mechanic to do, and I personally don't like how the stack marker looks different compared to all the other fights. The thing that I do like from this fight though is the wild charge mechanic and the prey marker where that person needs to get shield. I think it's an okay B tier fight, and now that I think about it, I think T2 is also a B tier fight because it's quite fun to do elegant rod and it's not a bad fight. T11. T11 is a fun fight. Even though I hit the add section before the post fight, the actual boss itself is very fun to run. Every role have stuff to do with the tanks having to run the ads around a circle, and DPS require targeting specific ads depending on their damage type, as well as a terror mechanic, where two person needs to be close to each other while dodging the pattern. Kinda like three like a race. I think the fight is very interesting, and because of that, I think this is an A tier fight. T12. I do think I prefer T11 compared to T12 because the only mechanic that I like from T12 is the brand and the flame of forgiveness. The black and white and red and blue fire is super simple to figure out and the ad phase is not interesting enough for me. The final phase is even worse and it's only being safe because there's a brand and flame of forgiveness that is happening during that. I think this is an easy C tier fight. T13. This fight is a masterpiece. The fight encloses the coils by fighting the Bahamut, and even 10 years later, the fight is still challenging with a lot of damage flying around. Tang required to grab Tether, and DPS required to bait the Earth Shaker, heal check everywhere. I think this is the pinnacle of fight design. The only thing that I don't like about this fight is the add phase, because I think it's too long, and doesn't really add anything to the Bahamut's fight other than to generate LP3. Even then, I think this is an easy S tier fight. Now we're going to Savage, and this is where the difficulty jump by a lot. T6S. T6S is just a harder version of T6, where the bouquet is now one-shot you, the devourer does 360 after the suck, and you can't cheese the slime. But even then, I think this is still a fun fight. It's not too difficult, same thing as T6. The RNG on the bulb and the yellow keep the fight fresh on a new run. I think this is an easy A tier fight. T7S. Now, this is the hardest fight in any coils fight by a lot. It is off the chart how difficult this fight is. The only problem is that the mechanic is heavily dependent on the physical range and healer, which causes the melee and tank to not have any responsibility for the most part. Personally, I love this fight, but I'm biased because I played Bard for my clear. If I want to rank this fight, it will be an easy S tier fight, but I can see how other people think this is a shit fight since they are not doing anything. So I'm just gonna put it in a B tier. T8S. I think T8S is a first experience fight, and once you clear it, the experience diminishes drastically. Same thing as T8, once you figure out the tower order mechanic, the execution is very simple. Just like T8, because this fight is a puzzle fight, there's not really a repeatability value in it. And because of that, I think this is just a B tier fight. T9S. 
If I say I love T9, then I love T9S even more. They are way more damaged. The dragon spawn is more randomized. The heavens fall pattern changes every run. But again, I hit the golem phase. I still love this fight, but it might be biased because we come up with our own strategy and the experience of figuring out the fight together as a group is something that I will cherish. For me, this fight is S tier. And yeah, that's my tier list. Actually, hold on. Fuck you. Let me add another tier. Personal favorite. T7S. Yeah, T7S should be my personal favorite tier. I'm going to make a dedicated video about T7S because of how much I love this fight. So subscribe if you're interested. And that is my tier list. Comment if you want, if you disagree or agree with my opinion. Which fight do you think should be higher? Which fight do you think should be lower? Let me know. I'll see you guys later. Don't forget to have fun.